Number 69, integrated concepts. A 105 kilogram basketball player crouches down 0.4 meters while waiting to jump. After exerting a force on the floor through this 0.4 meters, his feet leave the floor and his center of gravity rises 0.95 meters above its normal standing erect position. Letter A, using energy considerations, calculate his velocity when he leaves the floor. All right. So um, basically uh, what I can do here using energy considerations is um, I, I broke this problem up into three parts. Part A, when he crouches. Part B, when he's at the top, um, just as soon as he's about to leave the floor. And then part C is his highest point that he reaches. What I realized, though, to answer uh, part A here is going to be uh, to realize that all of the kinetic energy that he has at, at point B, okay, all of that kinetic energy, so he has purely kinetic energy at this point, um, so from the ground at least to uh, from the center of mass here to center of mass here, okay. He also has a little potential energy if I frame the problem from A to B because his, you know, height did increase there by 0.4. But in terms of my frame from looking at point B to point C, he has all kinetic energy at this particular point. Um, he will reach his maximum velocity there, and that'll be the initial kinetic energy. And at point C, since he stops moving, he has a maximum amount of potential energy, and that's uh, a final value. And I realize that all of this kinetic energy will eventually get converted into potential energy. So basically what we're saying mathematically is that the initial kinetic energy here will equal the final uh, potential energy. All right, due to gravity. So let's just expand on these, right? Kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Potential energy is then mgh. And since I'm talking about final, it's just the final height. Now we're looking for the velocity, right? So let's just uh, solve this equation for velocity, divide out the one half m from this side. And then same thing on the other side, right? One half m. So here we have the initial velocity squared will equal mgh all over one half m and we realize right the m's will cancel here so they'll go bye bye and then i got to take the square root of both sides right in order to find the answer so the initial velocity here shall be the square root of the acceleration due to gravity times the final height all divided by one half so let's plug this all in so gravity is 9.80 the height he obtains looking at from uh, uh, point B to point C, it's going to be the distance here of 0.95. And then that's all divided by 1 half or 0.5. So throw it into the calculator. Square root of 9.8 times 0.95 divided by 0.5. So we get 4.32. Four, whoops. So we get 4.32 and that is in terms of meters per second. So that's the answer to letter A. All right, let's move on. Uh, letter B. What average force did he exert on the floor? Okay, so do not neglect the force to support his weight as well as that to accelerate him. Great. So uh, basically what I can do here is I can look at this from a um, energy point of view, okay? So what I realize here is that uh, one second, let me just write B here. So what I realized that is now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare point A, okay, to point C. So I know, I do know all of the energy that he'll have at point C is purely potential. And that potential energy came from point A, all right? The force he then, and the work he did on the floor to propel himself upward, Okay. So basically, my frame of the problem here is going to be looking from A to C, okay? So what I realize is that the work done, okay, the work done at part A will equal his potential energy at the final point, okay? So let's just expand on this a little bit, all right? So now the work done at part A, I can substitute in this equation, okay? Uh, because it says the work done is equal to the force applied over the distance in which that force was applied times the cosine of the angle. Now, I'm interested in the positive value here. So I don't really, the angles I know are either going to be 0 or 180. So just to simplify it, let's just keep that out for now. So I know here that the work at part A right, will be the force he applied over part A 
multiplied by the distance, right? He applied that force in part A, will now equal the potential energy, his final potential energy, okay, which is now mg, mg times the difference in height, right, times his change in height. And his change in height was his height final minus the height initial, okay? So we just have to be careful how we uh, plug in the value there. So his, uh, so we are looking for the applied force here, right? So basically divide out then the distance he applied the force in part A. And we have a nice formula here that says that the applied force will be equal to his mass times gravity multiplied by the final height minus, oops, minus the initial height, all divided by the distance over which he applied that force. So his mass is 105, right? The gravity is 9, 9.80. The final height minus the initial. Now just notice, it's the here's the final height, and here's the initial height. So what's the difference between those two lines? It's just the addition of these two values, right? That's all it is, okay? So I know it says subtraction here, but I can, you know, I can look at it in that way. That's totally fine. So uh, 0 0.950 plus 0 0.4. Zero, zero. The reason why it's a plus is really because the final height, um, you know, reference to this line, it's 0.95 meters above, so that's the final, that's positive, and then it's minus this height, but this height is below that line, so therefore it's a double negative. All right. So then that's all now divided by the distance over which he applies that force, which he applied the force in part A uh, over 0.4 meters. Okay, so 0 0.4. Great, and now we can calculate that. So let's just throw it into the calculator. So 105 times 9.8 times then parentheses 0 0.95 plus 0.4. And then we will divide out the 0.4. And here we get a value of 3.47 times 10 to the third. And that is in terms of Newtons. Okay, great. So there is the force he applies. So now for part C. Let's take a look at the question. It says, what was, what was his power output during the acceleration phase? So basically, we want to find the power output over, you know, from phase, from point A to point B, over which he's accelerating. So now realize that we just found the average force, okay? And we do know something about his velocities at these points as well, right? Realize that at part A, his initial velocity was zero, okay? His initial velocity was zero. And that the final velocity of part B here, just before he leaves the floor, was 4.32 right, meters per second. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight this formula on the bottom right. Okay. So put C on the bottom left. So the power is equal to the force times velocity. In other words, I can use this as an average formula, right? The average power is equal to the average force multiplied by the average velocity. So what we found here is that the uh, average force we just calculated in part B. So that's 3.47 times 10 to the third, right, Newtons. And now this is going to be multiplied by the average velocity. Well, how do you average these two numbers? It's easy, right? You just add them together and divide by two, right? You add the numbers together and then divide by the number of numbers you have, right? 4.32 plus zero, okay, all divided by two. And guess what, when we calculate this now, we're going to find the power output, okay? Average power output. So 3.47 times 10 to the third times 4.32 divided by 2. And here we get about 4, uh, not 4, 7.50 uh, actually about, right? 7.50, 7.50 times 10 raised to the third, and that's in terms of watts, all right? Yeah, all right. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. This concludes chapter seven, and uh, I will be moving on to chapter eight now. Why don't you join me? All right, look forward to seeing you in chapter eight. Hope you have a, uh, hope you're having a great time in physics class, and look forward to helping you with that chapter. Have a great day.